when you look at Jeff Bezos, okay, obviously the founder of Amazon, the genius, okay, of his core principles, okay, and sort of that North Star based on the core principles, and they aren't like the off-the-shelf core principles. They are like really, really well done. We've done it our, at our organization. So can you talk about one key takeaway that you would leave organizations with that they, they're probably missing today is either a core philosophy of leadership or those core principles that they stand by, that how important that is to have that down in writing, because that sort of galvanizes everybody against it, right? We have, you know, we have these concepts of walk the eight feet. We grow apples, we sell them to apple buyers. We don't try to convince orange buyers to buy apples. You know, throw your hat over the wall. Uh, don't go cowboy. Tap into the collective resources of the team. We have all these Dakota-isms that guides everybody. Could you talk about that? Because you know, when I think of working with a consulting firm on leadership, what would be some of the tactical key takeaways that you would leave, you know, that you leave an organization with or on a continuous basis that you establish for them so they can follow that? Sure. Our, our tagline says it all, right? People over everything. Uh, we believe that you know, if you're, if as a leader, if your people trust you, if they believe you have their best interest in mind, they will do anything for you. And creating that culture and creating that environment can be really uncomfortable for leaders, right? Leaders giving up ownership, um, leaders allowing their people to make decisions and sometimes fail and learn from those decisions. Uh, but we believe that when leaders take on and, and embrace that approach, their sustainability and consistency in, you know, in, the, out, in the outcomes of, for, that, for that company. So you know, we believe that, that leaders have certain traits um, and one of them we help develop is curiosity, right? So the leader's not just coming from his own personal or her own personal perspective, because that's your own story. That's the story in your head. Unless you're, and you usually go to the worst case scenario with that. Unless you're curious, and you actually learn and try to find out, right? Sometimes it, it even happens with our children. Sometimes, you know, my children do some things and I shake my head and go, why would you do something like that, right? And then when I actually truly ask, hey, tell me why you did that, there's, you know, there's some real merit in why they made that decision. And we, we have to be willing to do that with, with our people. And we have to um, empower our people and, 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 and give them ownership. And we don't, look for change, we look for evolution. People don't like change, right? right? But they're, they will evolve. And this can often, you know, when you're working with us, we're gonna challenge you, that's what we're there for. And it can often be uncomfortable for the leader to give up some power and to give up some ownership and to allow his people to make mistakes or her people to make mistakes. So let's dig a little deeper on that concept of curiosity. Because what I think you said maybe a different way, it could be about asking questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I just heard my wife mentioned to me yesterday, she read again back to Bezos. He said, you have to go six layers deep within the organization. Right. So if you think about institutional knowledge within a company, mm -hmm. right, if you're a leader and you're not asking questions of that person who probably has the answers, you've just never asked that they feel uncomfortable speaking up. So you have to dig right to get to the answers. Can you talk about that? Because that to me, if you're talking about one key distinction of working with you guys, if you could just get the leaders to be curious to ask the questions? Well, there's two parts of it too. They have to be authentic in their curiosity, right? right. They have to have humility. They have to actually be willing to listen, um, to understand the problem, okay? Not just you know, listen for the sake of, of listening. Because when you, when you do that um, and, and you are authentic, your people will start to give you answers and, and if you act on them. Um, but we, we talk about it, um, all the time and, and there's you know if you sit in a room uh full of people whether it's a, a sports team or whether it's a, a a corporation and or a sales team and you you know you ask them you know you ask them a question uh what happens if uh you're you know the, the person that you're you're trying to sell to um says gives you this answer right away okay what you're going to get out of 90% of the people in that room is something negative, right? Right, And when you do just a little test of probable versus possible, right? This is only probable, but this is possible. You find out that, that the percentage of that being, a, a, you know, finding a way to make that a positive is much higher. So, you know, being curious um, is, if you're not curious, you're only coming from one perspective, that's your own. 
and it's right. just the stitch your own story. So getting people to understand and ask questions at, at every level, right? Getting them to, to ask questions, uh, it also helps you to understand uh, how people learn, how they develop, how they think, right? Right. So I, this is so interesting because I have two kids that play college lacrosse. Obviously, Jim, you did. You coached college lacrosse for 30 years. But there was always this line from either John Noster and Paul O'Grady, and they always talked about how you select captains, right? And they, always, they would always say, the players know. Like the, you ask the players, they know who the, the best leaders are. They know, right? So if you're not asking the players, right, what they're thinking, right, or the salespeople, the frontline people, and you're not asking those questions just to get their opinion because they're out there and they're observing, and then to appreciate those opinions too. Because the thing that I don't like to do at all is that if someone has, a, if someone has an idea, either saying no or squashing it or understanding why, like what was the vein they were going down, right, and maybe we end up getting to a, a little bit better answer without saying that's a bad idea or no. 